Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy, Speed Your, and today is gonna be another video from the vault. Uh, this is the film like the first line. I put some stuff in that wasn't in like the original, and that's the uh, the cue cards. You'll see um as I switch from like film to film. So yeah, that's the British. Uh, take a look and hope you enjoy the video. Because I think that the audience became a collaborator of mine. I couldn't show 10 cases what a child murderer did to a child. It would be tasteless. I, I myself would have hated to show it. But by not showing it, the whole audience, everyone in the audience could think about the most horrible thing which he could imagine. And therefore, the whole audience became a collaborator of mine. First Lang was a German filmmaker in 1919 all the way up to 1960. He was a groundbreaker in the early days of cinema. His most famous work was Metropolis in 1927. The case of First Lang is odd one when you dive a little more deeper than the Google search. His influence on film was so impactful that it is still being felt to this day and these reasons and more are why people were looking for missing scenes in Metropolis but we'll get to that later. In this video essay we will be looking at three of Fritz Lang's films in order. Dr. Mubuza Degamber in 1922, Metropolis 1927 and M 1931. In the last video, Film Legacy of Frankenstein, I was taking a look at the films, three films that closely resemble Mary Shelley's novel. However, this time it is to create a spotlight to talk about a master in a young medium and what we can take and learn from his works. However, I must mention First Lang's helping hand in another 1920s masterpiece, The Cabin of Dr. Caligari. It's being said that he helped the writer with getting the project off the ground. The story goes that the writer didn't leave until he got a meeting from one of the production heads. I thought that was really funny. Let us talk about Dr. Mabuza the Gambler, 1922. Dr. Mabuza the Gambler is a four and a half hour long film um, divided into two parts originally released about a month apart from each other. Dr. Mabuza the Gambler and the Second Inferno, a game of for the people of our age, May 26, 1922. In modern times, it was classed as a thriller slash crime film. There are many meanings to the, the spieler, uh, which could mean gambler, puppeteer, or actor. And with that, they chose the spieler as gambler for this. The first part of you know, this four and a half hour epic starts out very well. Dr. Mabuse is a up, upper class aristocrat who wants to destroy the system the inside out. There are no political reasons. It is when it is because that Dr. Mabuza, Dr. Mabuza is so outside of the system that he wants to take hold of and obliterate from the inside out. The, f the first thing we see him do 
in the film is decide on what disguise he wants to say and he writes a note on money which for the time in Germany was sacrosanct because uh, money in Germany was so valuable basically writing you know anything on money could be you know could be deemed as uh, disrespectful. Ekerok, the son of a millionaire um, industrialist, is Dr. Mabuse's first victim, which we can see he, Dr. Mabuse uses his powers. Dr. Mabuse is played by Rudolf Klein Loga, uh, who was a mainstay in director Fritz Lang's films um, throughout. So we're going to see him kind of in and out of some certain films we're going to be discussing in this um, today. He was the main uh, mad doctor in Metropolis as well. Fritz Lang was a big fan of Vantamus series 1913 and the links are pretty strong. In every Vantamus episode the main character shows the viewer his disguises. It did not the do your However, with Dr. Mabuse, it is a plot of the film that is not a nod to the viewer. The best scene in um, Dr. Mabuse is an opening scene to where we see that Dr. Mabuse needs some, some insider information on the stock market so he can ruin it and essentially just you know, crash the market for the upper class because that's how they got their money. His plan needs to be timed because the information that he wants is on train. He gets one of the men to kill the man with the information and then he throws the package or information. Just at that, at that point, a car that is going underneath the train passes, gets his plans, and is just absolutely perfectly timed. Another character aspect of Dr. Mabuse is how it's money. Dr. Mabuse has another house on the poorer side of town in which he employs blind men to counterfeit money, to make counterfeit money. This aspect of Dr. Mabuse is quite genius because this is a false positive in structure because the blind men have finally have a job that they can finally have a job and have a positive impact on their lives however they are helping by doing something illegal Dr. Mabuza pushes everybody he meets into the grey where morality is nothing but something that people believe in so it has no real effect Dr. Mabuse The Gander Part 1 is a great suspense thriller, a lot of highs and lows. At the end of Part 1, Dr. Mabuse, Dr. Mabuse has made himself known and he's not a person to mess with. It is a perfect ending because as a viewer we want him taken down. Dr. Mabuse The Gander Part 2, the chief is on his tail and he wants to take down Dr. Mabuse. Will Dr. Mabuse face justice? The change in Dr. Mabuse in part 2 is something that I want to talk about. In part 1 he's very cold and calculating and kind of methodical. However, in part 2 Dr. Mabuse is more and more frantic. He, he begins to drink more he put the chief closer and closer with each passing scene. All in all, Dr. Mabuse, the gambler, part 1 and 2 a great film for the time. Very much a thriller in a sense of like a, a Hitchcock film would do in a modern viewpoint. It is a very much a thriller. So the next film that we will be discussing and talking about is Metropolis.
this was Fritz Lang's second film, based on a book like Dr. Mabuse's was. Metropolis is a very, a very special film for a lot of cinema lovers. It is iconic. This was mainly because of what happened after the premiere. Metropolis was cut substantially after its German premiere, removing large portions of Lang's original footage. For many years, it was thought that the missing footage was lost to time. However, in 2008, a destroyed print of Fritz Lang's original cut. The long restoration process that required additional scenes from another print from New Zealand. The film was 95% restored and shown their screens in Frankfurt and Berlin simultaneously on the 12th of February 2010. The search was going on since the German premiere in 1927. Images from the film goes beyond pop culture. It has a historic meaning in cinema as a medium. H.G. Wells, a titan of sci-fi literature, wrote a critical review of Metropolis in 1927. In summary, H.G. Wells questioned Fritz Lang on where he got his views of the future. When H.G. Wells wrote The Time Machine, he asked scientists what would life be like in the future, as in how people would live, etc. Fritz Lang went a different approach, however. He asked artists what we what life would be like in the future. Best scenes in the film is the Moloch scene, which sees some workers being eaten by a mechanical Moloch. The machines that run Metropolis are fueled by human sacrifice. However, one of my personal favorite scenes is Marina's transformation. Starting off with the design of the robot, it's very interesting considering that the film was made in 1927. The design's a load up. The robot is made to look more feminine rather than masculine, and I think it's a good change because we see in science fiction we see more masculine figures that are robots than female. Robots and masculinity do have. No, a link between the two of them. Metropolis is a very important film in the grand cinematic world. The film Metropolis inspired many films throughout the years, as I said before. M is a very disturbing film. It's very cold, it's very cognate, but it also is kind of a timed piece, as it were. M is a disturbing story about a child murderer who is hunted down and brought to rough justice by citizens of Belgium. M remains a powerful work. It is. It was remade in 1951. However, the original version is very very tough to beat. M was Peter Lorre's first starring role. He was typecast as a villain for many years after in films such as Mad Love and film adaptation of Crime and Punishment. Peter Lorre as a child's murder is creepy yet pathetic. Yes, what he does in the movie is wrong. However, he is so pathetic he can't, he could not be this monster. That he that would be looking for. So there's a slight bit of dangling carrot to everybody, and there's tension there as well. However, what makes him so pathetic is what makes him so much of a villain. There is a reason why I picked Fritz Lang's early work, such as Doctor Mabuse, The Gambler, Metropolis, and M, instead of his later American work. On a meta level, these three represent 
Germany past, present and inevitable future into fascist ideals. Dr. Mabuse de Camber was the death of old Germany, the search for a new way of life. Metropolis represents Germany on what it could and should have been in the early 20th century. A technological powerhouse with a lot of weight and power behind it. But above all else, it knew what mankind needed was a moderator. However, in M, which came, which was released in 1931, this film represents the paranoia. Fritz Lang died of a stroke in 1976, and he is buried in Hollywood Hills Cemetery. There isn't a lot of information about Fritz Lang out there, and I frankly think that that's a sad thing to witness because I think that people should watch his films because they're very important to the history of cinema, the history of film. He was and still shapes film to what we see it today and he was a pioneer in that.